In this video, I want to look at the law of signs, but just the ambiguous case. This is the case where we're given two sides and the non-included angle. This is illustrated in this picture here. So I have my typical triangle A, B, C. Side A is opposite angle A. Side B is opposite angle B. And side C is opposite angle C. So in this scenario, we're given angle A is 30 degrees. We're given the length of side B. And I'm also going to give you different lengths of side A to see what happens in this triangle. So if I'm given angle A, little a, and little b, we can put that into the law of sines. And these are the three things I know. So I can use this part of the law of sines to find angle B. So if I multiply both sides of this equation here by B, little b, side B, I get the sine of angle B is B times sine A over A. But before I actually do this algebraically, I want to look at it graphically. So let's go to... Um, Dr. Ted Coe's website. He has a wonderful GeAlgebra applet for um, talking about given two sides and the non-included angle. So I want to create my scenario where my angle A was 30 degrees and my side B was 16. There we go. So now here's my angle A. My side B is 16. And I'm going to draw different lengths of side A coming from this point here. So initially, I want to look at, say, what happens when A is, let's make it 5 units long. Well, if you see when A is 5 units long, side A is not long enough to touch down the other side of angle A and form angle C. So there is no possible triangle to form given this information of angle A is 30, B is 16, and little a is 5. Now when we do this algebraically using the law of sines, you will land up with an expression that says sine b is equal to some number that is bigger than 1. And remember that the sine of any angle has to lie between negative 1 and 1. So if you land up with the sine b equals 1.2, that's impossible. That means there's no possible triangles. So now let's make A larger. And as you can see, as A gets larger, it's going to get closer and closer to the other side. And eventually, when A equals 8, it just touches the other side. And I get a 90 degree angle. So I will get one triangle being formed. And I can show you by clicking this. So I get one triangle, the green triangle. And in fact, it will be a right triangle. So if I solve this algebraically, I get the sine of B equals 1. So that means it's 90 degrees. So now I want to look at what happens as I make side A here larger. So let me get rid of the shading on my triangle. And so now I'm going to make A larger. And as you can see, as A gets longer, it hits side C. It can hit side C right here. It could hit side C over here. So it gives you two different possible triangles. And let's shade it. If I show you the first triangle, here's the obtuse triangle in green. And here's my other triangle in pink. So each of those two triangles has the um, same values for angle A, little b, and little a. So there are two possible solutions. And let's get rid of the shading again. Let's make, make A get even bigger. As you can see, as A gets even larger, I still have my 
little obtuse triangle over here and a bigger acute triangle over here. And then as A gets bigger and bigger, eventually the obtuse triangle is going to get very small and eventually it will disappear as A get gets larger and goes over here. So the only possible triangle I have that forms is this acute triangle. Okay, so let's get it, get rid of the shading of the triangle. And I want to make A smaller where I get my two possible triangles again. As you can see, angle B has two possible choices here, 136.4 and 43.6. And so the way this comes out algebraically is when we find the sine of B, we do inverse sine, we get this angle. Remember, the sine is also positive in quadrant 2. So we have to use our reference angle of 43.6, subtract it from 180 to get this angle. And as long as this angle plus this is less than 180, then there is a second possible triangle. So that's the way that we get two different solutions, the acute triangle and the obtuse triangle.